Orlando's 11 year old Julian Newman has found out firsthand the power of the Internet. And less than 24 hours later, the clips were on ESPN Sports Center. Julian Newman, born September 6, 2001. Today's feature could be the poster child for the saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch. When Jamie Newman had his first chicken, he not only counted on it to become the world's next big basketball superstar, but he decided to stand as tall as he could and hold him up for the world to see and cheer. And you know what? Cheer they did. To the tune of almost a million followers on Instagram and billions of views and clicks on his name on YouTube. Not to mention his newfound path, reality TV. It's a funny trade-off in the world today as society loves, covets, and are astonished not only by how great something or someone is, but them doing it at such a young age makes the fanfare even greater. It's a lesson to all involved in the journey of basketball that greatness is not just born. There's so much more that has to play out in order to reach that existence. Circumstance, timing, life experience, work ethic, health, and even luck to name a few. You don't just have a son and automatically because you love basketball, he will as well. Produce with a woman 5'3 and think your chicken will dominate a sport built for the success of giants. It can happen, and I'm sure every father thinks that, until a harsh reality sets in that maybe you should have let life play out a bit more, let your chickens grow under a smooth, consistent radar, and at the right time, shock the world. That way, you prey on another trade-off in society. They love the underdog, and with a humble attitude, they'll push you straight to the top. Julian Newman and his basketball upbringing was the exact opposite of humble. It looked cute and entertaining when he was 12 years old, but at 19, no college offers, no pro prospects, and no more prodigy talk, he's at the point where settling is now the Claire's option. Did Julian Newman lose that life in the grand scheme? No, not at all. He's still one of the most popular figures in the dominating world of social media and at any point can turn that into financial gain if he hasn't already. But that's not today's focus. This is the story of why things just didn't go as planned and what may have stunted his growth. Salute to all that's requested him, especially in the growth chat on Twitch. Here we go, man. It's your boy Jay-Z, stunted growth. Julian Newman is a 5'7 point guard from Orlando, Florida that gained national attention with his filmed workouts of performing dribbling moves advanced beyond his years. These videos catapulted his status and set the internet on fire. His father, who prophesied that Julian would not have the same fate as previous prodigies, trained him twice and sometimes three times a day. And when he wasn't doing that, he was somewhere with a ball in his hands. As a fifth grader, he was apparently moved to varsity after scoring 91 points in a game and embarrassing his level of competition. He led the state in assists at 11 years old, despite standing just four foot seven. Magazines began writing cover stories and features on the new prodigy, and soon after, a new video of his went viral and the expectations began. Stunt number one, Jamie Newman. It may not end with, but Julian Newman's story most certainly, actually biologically, begins with this figure who happens to be his father. LeVar Ball. I think it's the right time to introduce superstar, philanthropist, orator of every subject, knowledge on things not even he knows, prophet extraordinaire, and Jordan's number one fair in life. LeVar came to mind when thinking of Julian Newman's story, and more specifically, Jamie Newman, because unlike LeVar, whose sons all grew to be above average size, had the talent to back up what he said, and himself having a personality most liked or at least respected, Jamie and his handling of Julian is sometimes questioned. 
LeVar planned his kid's future even down to the size of the woman he'd produce with, built his future around them as investment, and predicted they would all go to the NBA or become pro basketball players. So why couldn't the same thing happen for Jamie Newman? Well, the main reason we'll speak on next, but one of the reasons is because of his approach to showcasing his son. After getting a job at Downey Christian School, Jamie began featuring his son on his team and allowed Julian to develop horrible features to his game that are shunned by just about every organized basketball coach in America. Features like over dribbling to the point the defense isn't even mesmerized anymore and looking as if someone hit a Mortal Kombat code, now the character has to go through all his moves. Instead of teaching the young player the right way, Jamie thought he was being different than other coaches and parents by promoting the hot dogging over dribbling, deep threes and every possession trying to embarrass the defender. This set Julian up for failure because the older you get, the less that's tolerated, and that's what eventually happened. When he became a little older and started to face tougher competition, those moves became something the same internet now laughs at in celebration when he's blocked or makes a mistake. When LeVar Ball hit the internet a few years ago and gained notoriety for basically doing the same thing, Jamie saw that and turned up the exploitation of his son's skills, but it backfired and people actually started to dislike Julian's playstyle, now older, and also Jamie Newman because now he looks as if he was wrong predicting or maybe projecting the life he wanted on his son. Had it not been for Jamie Newman always in his son's frame, I think maybe he could have gotten a Division I offer, as coaches don't want to deal with a family member like his dad. Is your family tall? Do you have a tall family? Do you think you're going to have a growth spurt at some point? You're obviously going to keep going, but what do you think? Is there a chance for you to be 6'3", 6'4"? I'm 6'5". Stunt number two, stunted growth, literally. The second growth stunt, in my opinion, for Julian Newman is the fact he never grew much past when we first knew of him. He was 4'7 in those viral videos, he's 5'7 now. A foot in growth wouldn't be so bad had he kept growing. Except he didn't and has been the size he is now or shorter in the most important times of his life. In high school, he showed glimpses of why media outlets at the time were calling him the best young prospect they've ever seen, but as he got older, the chairs after he embarrassed the defender changed to laughs and even chants criticizing his physical stature. If Julian Newman somehow grew to six foot or anything above, he may have had a shot to make it to the professional or at least Division I level should he be able to change his flashy game to a more calm, fundamental one. But he didn't grow to six foot, and he's also never refined his game. With his father as the coach for most of his amateur life, he continued to play like he was putting on a playground show and wanted notoriety, fame, and only the oohs and ahs. It's the difference between the ball boys almost all making it to the league while Julian looks to reality TV to save his life. Lonzo, Melo are both tall point guards or even a height they could play off ball. D'Angelo did grow to be above average size, just not for a wing in the NBA. Newman with his style and size was literally doomed from the start and was seen as a disadvantage for a college team defensively, much less the NBA. Stunt number three, sit down, be humble. In the words of Kendrick Lamar, this stunt may be the most important of Julian Newman's story because again, the last thing you want to give people that don't like you is attention and examples of why it's good to hate you. Starting from the actions of his father and the constant delusional public pressure he was putting on his kid and the statements he'd make proclaiming Julian the next star before he could ever learn the game the right way or at least not have a target on his back so soon. 
When LeVar Ball said Lonzo would be better than Steph, Lonzo was already on his way to the draft and an above average point guard in stature and actually had talent good enough to be taken second overall. Jamie and Julian himself would create expectations like these but not be able to back it up on the court and it led to he at this point without a chance it seems to further his career. This lack of humility led to public bashing of Newman through countless videos online trashing the player for his style and boasting that eventually led him nowhere near expectations. All in all, Julian Newman was and still is fun to watch, even if you're rooting against him. He didn't choose for his life to be this way and at the very least he doesn't seem to have a bad attitude about the way his basketball journey has went. Where does it go from here? Well, pro basketball in America is probably no longer an option and I don't see him going overseas and not being able to feel the love of his fans who may forget he exists. He does have the reality show and I think his personality and family suit that route. Salute to him, much respect man, it's not easy to be a child prodigy, so I gotta commend him for his effort and his attitude along the way. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash stunnedgrowthgaming if you want extra free content like me breaking down the day's highlights, moves, drafts, and past players or games upon your request. Let's chat and talk live as it's easier to answer your questions than a place like Instagram where your messages tend to get lost. Follow me there. It's free and we can connect instantly. Join the Discord as well to chat in-game. I'll leave links to everything below.